Hello and welcome. This is Wilker and today we'll be spotlighting Thermal Expansion, a technology mod for Minecraft that can replace several of the other mods that you're probably familiar with or possibly just supplement the uses that you're getting out of other mods. I'm on Minecraft 1.4.6 and the latest version of Thermal Expansion which is 2.1.6 and I will have links to the Minecraft forums thread for this mod so that you can get it for yourself if you want to check it out. We're going to start off with some of the basic components of thermal expansion, um, some of the things you'll need to use the mod to its fullest. Then we'll go check out some of the machines and some of the items and we'll look at how to build everything. First up is the Crescent Hammer. The Crescent Hammer is a tool that you will end up using a lot for thermal expansion. It's very simple to build. It takes three pieces of iron and a piece of silver uh, and a crafting table. And you'll find that you'll use this to place and or to remove many of the machines after you place them, as well as to operate some of the advanced functions of the conduits and uh, liquid ducts that we'll get into in just a little bit. And you can also use it like a build craft wrench in a lot of cases um, to turn switches and things like that and engines. Uh, you can actually use a Buildcraft wrench to operate some thermal expansion stuff, but lately the Buildcraft wrench has been a little bit buggy, so we're going to focus on the Crescent Hammer. Next up is the Pneumatic Servo. This is a machine component. It's made of two pieces of iron, two pieces of glass, and a piece of redstone. Not a big deal. Uh, pretty easy to make and pretty easy to get early. Next up we're going to look at the machine frame. The machine frame is made from four pieces of iron, a piece of gold, four pieces of glass, also not a huge deal, not too expensive. And it, those two along with these next three items are going to be the vast majority of the components that you're going to make in order to build these machines. These are the redstone coils and there's three different kinds. There's a conductance coil, a transmission coil, and a reception coil. And they're all made very similarly with two pieces of redstone in the corners of your crafting box and an ingot in the middle. The first one is made with a, a Electrum ingot, and that's important because Electrum is an item that's added by thermal expansion, and we'll get into how to make some of that here in just a minute. And that makes your conductance coil. Next up is the transmission coil, and it's made with a piece of silver, and that can be any kind of silver you want, um, the silver from thermal expansion or the silver from forestry, whatever you happen to be using. Last is the reception coil, and it's made with a piece of gold, so a little bit more expensive than the other two, but not a big deal still. Now let's go take a look at some of the machines we can make with thermal expansion. We're going to start off with some of the basic machines over here. Pull up their internal buffer and they'll use that before they use external power, which is really nice to allow you to manage your power systems a little bit more efficiently. The next thing is this top energy usage part of the user interface and it shows you how much power the machine is currently using, the maximum amount it can use and the total amount of energy stored in the internal buffer. And the usage and maximum power is another really neat feature of thermal expansion that we're going to get into a few more times. But all of the machines and power transfer in thermal expansion is smart. And what that means is that it will adjust its power usage depending on the work of the machine or the power available. So your engines will produce power in accordance with how much is being drawn with them, your conduits will transmit power in accordance with how much machines are asking for and your machines will use power depending on how much is available to them. All very cool stuff. The next part of this user interface is your redstone control. You can either shut the redstone signal control of the machine completely off which means it'll always run no matter what. You can set it to enabled but low which means that it will run without a redstone signal, but passing a redstone signal to it will turn the machine off. Or high, which means it requires a active redstone signal to run. For right now, we're going to leave this at low. And we're going to look at what's possibly the coolest part of these thermal expansion machines, which is the side configuration. You'll see here a representation of our machine. You see there's the front of the machine. It looks just like the front of the pulverizer. And you'll see some boxes. The boxes represent the top, bottom, left, right, and back side of the machine. And you'll notice that right now the left and the back have little blue squares on them. And they correspond to this blue highlighted input box. And if you look at the machine, what it's letting me know is that either from the side or the back of this machine, it will accept inputs. Right now we're not going to run any inputs to it. Instead of that, 
we're going to take some iron ore and we're going to drop it in there and it'll do pretty much what you would expect a pulverizer to do which is to take our ore and pulverize it and much like an industrial craft macerator you're going to end up with two iron dusts per ore that we pulverize excuse me pulverized iron per ore so once again it gives you a way to expand your ore production very early in the game uh, the pulverizer is a pretty simple recipe we're gonna let that go for just a minute uh, the pulverizer is where did it go the pulverizer is made from two pieces of copper two pieces of flint a redstone reception coil a machine frame and a piston at the top so once you build it, which again, you can build pretty early in your Minecraft world, you can then use it to expand your ore production. Oh, and cool, we got a ferrous dust. So one of the other neat um, mechanics in thermal expansion is the ability to get secondary items out of your uh, machine. So in this case, pulverizing iron gives us a low chance to, to receive some ferrous dust. And right now, ferrous dust doesn't have a huge use. Uh, it's plan for some future items. King Lemming says he's working on it as well as some uh, um, a few other items that he's added that don't quite have a use yet. But as you'll see we have eight pulverized iron here and our machine's out of power so it turned off. I find that in general um, a full buffer in the pulverizer will process somewhere in the neighborhood of 18 items but you know your mileage may vary. So I want to show you one of the really cool things you can do with the uh, input and output options on that user interface. You'll notice the next item over here is called a powered furnace. Um, and I had some iron in there from when I was messing around with this earlier. Sorry about that. Um, and you'll see right away that the currently the powered furnace is out of power also. So I'm actually going to go turn on these engines and let these guys get a little bit of power back. So much like a normal machine, once I ran the iron ore through this, it went to the output slot here and I pulled it out. Now I have pulverized iron here. But what I can do instead of that is I can direct the output to be this red box. And then once it's finished pulverizing a piece of ore, it will automatically get pushed out of the right side of the machine and into our powered furnace. You'll notice our powered furnace accepts input from the left and outputs on the right. So as soon as this iron ore gets pulverized, you'll see it happen there, it pushes the pulverized iron into the powered furnace, which much like any other furnace simply is going to uh, melt items for you, smelt items for you. And then its output goes through a normal build craft pipe and into a chest. So what you've got here is some very easy item maintenance without having to build very complicated logistics networks. It simply accepts input from the left, outputs to the right, you notice the box stays empty, and my iron bars shoot automatically down this cobblestone pipe and into this chest. Now if we wanted to, we could also smelt this ferrous dust, but we're not going to right now. Um, like I said, it doesn't really do much. You'll notice my engines over here are just happily running. Um, and we'll get into a little bit more of what I've got going on here in just a second. The next machine I want to show you is the sawmill. Now the sawmill is very cool. Uh, what the sawmill does is it allows you to reclaim a lot of your items that you may otherwise have to just throw away. Um, the sawmill can process a lot of things that there's no other way to process in Minecraft. The sawmill is made from an iron axe, uh, two wood planks, two copper bars, a reception coil, and that machine frame that we've seen several times in the past already. The way the sawmill works is we simply take an item. I've got some items over here that I wanted to show you. For example, a door. We can take our wooden door. We can throw it in there. You'll notice uh, one of the characteristics of thermal expansion is that it does pull the item out of the input inventory right away when you use it. So you don't have to wait for it to process. It'll go and hide in an internal buffer and go ahead and finish doing what it's doing. It allows you to kind of set one item behind it if you want to. And we got all six of our wood planks back from our door. Very cool. We can throw a crafting table in there. And likewise, once it finishes processing, we'll get our four planks back out of it. One of the other benefits of the sawmill is that unlike normally 
putting a log in a crafting table which gives you four planks for each log that we place in a sawmill we'll actually get six planks you also receive sawdust and I'll show you what sawdust does here in just a minute so let's let the rest of these uh, uh, logs finish processing you'll notice we get six for every single one of them which is great so now we've got a 50 percent increase on our wood production simply by using the sawmill um, one of the last things I want to show you that's a really neat feature of these as opposed to throwing your rubber wood in an industrial craft extractor we can throw it in our sawmill and we will get planks or let's see if we get lucky here we do have a chance of getting a uh, sticky resin also and we didn't get any from that one but you only get four uh, planks out of uh, you get four jungle planks out of rubber wood. So if you want to get some uh, planks instead of uh, sticky resin, you can. It gives you another use for your rubber trees if you make a rubber tree farm. The induction smelter is the next item that uh, we have up here. And the induction smelter is really interesting. First of all, we need the induction smelter to make some unique items for thermal expansion. And I'll show you here the, uh, the recipe for it. It's made very simply with two pieces of sand, some copper, a reception coil, the machine frame, and a bucket. And the reason that this is really interesting is because it uses two input slots, a green slot and a purple slot. So the first thing that we'll look at doing, and here let me grab some pulverized iron. You can put your pulverized metals or your dusts in here in order to smelt them but it's going to take two at once so you can't double your dust production past what your pulverizer already did so you notice i put two pulverized iron in there and got two iron ingots out and it used one of our pieces of sand now to do any of your normal smelting you'll do some type of metal along with sand but what's very very cool here is that if you don't want to pulverize you can actually put a single piece of ore in next to your sand and you'll get the exact same result. You notice we got two iron out of a single ore or two iron out of two iron dusts. Really neat. More importantly, the pulver the induction smelter, excuse me, is used to create some unique items. Some of the things we're going to need for some of our machines are hardened glass. Hardened glass is a recipe that is built just in the induction smelter and it requires pulverized obsidian and lead. So let's grab some obsidian and we're going to throw it in our pulverizer. And you're going to notice that even though it's tosses it over here in the furnace that the furnace can't do anything with the pulverized obsidian by itself. We're just going to let four of these smash up and we'll grab those. Great. And then let's get some lead. So what you what happens is in your induction smelter you take your pulverized obsidian and your lead and you notice it uses two pulverized obsidian for each lead and that will pop out hardened glass so not real expensive you do have to have obsidian which I know can be tough uh, early game but once you have obsidian you can throw it in your pulverizer and with some lead and make some hardened glass I'm going to show you what this is used for here in just a minute there's a couple more machines I want to show you the first one is the magma crucible and the magma crucible does a bunch of really neat things. I'm just going to show you um, the main use for it as far as crafting goes. But you can throw cobblestone. You can throw uh, all kinds of different stuff in here in order to get output. So if you put in cobblestone, smooth stone, or obsidian, or nether rack, you'll actually get lava outputted uh, over here in the liquid slot. So what the magma crucible does is it takes solid items, applies power to them, and outputs them as liquids. You'll notice I have it sitting next to another machine called the liquid transposer. And the liquid transposer allows you to fill up items with, the, with liquids. Um, it also allows you 
via this button right here to dump items into the uh, liquid internal storage of the machine. So you'll notice I have my magma crucible outputting to the right and the input over here from the liquid transposers on the left. So anything that I melt in the magma crucible will automatically get put in the liquid transposer. I'm going to melt some redstone. So what we're going to end up with here is liquid redstone. And the reason that I already have some in here is because it's actually pretty slow. A full stack of redstone will only get you um, between one and two, maybe two and a half bars of this internal storage filled up. Uh, I think I put two full stacks into this machine already in order to get this much liquid redstone. So I did some of that earlier so we wouldn't have to just sit here and watch it all process. Um, so again, magma crucible melts solids into liquids and your liquid transposer allows you to fill or empty items of liquids. The reason this is important is because you can run a magma crucible to, as part of your production process here in order to get liquid redstone, but you can also use it as a lava factory. Um, and thermal expansion gives you a couple of neat things you can do with lava. We'll get into a couple more of those in just a second. Um, before I forget, I do want to show you the recipes for these items. The uh, magma crucible is made with uh, a machine frame and a reception coil, along with two pieces of copper and two pieces of nether brick. So obviously a little bit more advanced up the tech tree than some of the other recipes because you've got to have nether access and you've got to find a nether fort. And it's topped off with a bucket. The liquid transposer is actually a little bit more simple of a recipe. It uses two copper, two glass, and a bucket on top. So now what are we going to do with this liquid redstone and this um, hardened glass that we just made? Um, you'll notice that thermal expansion actually adds some new items as far as liquid and power trans, um, transplant goes. The first item I'm going to show you is the energy conduit and this is made with two electrum ingots and oh you know we forgot to look at how to make electrum. Let's go over here and make some electrum real quick. Okay so I've shown you how to make hardened glass and now we're going to real quickly make some electrum ingots. They're very simple. You'll notice I've got some pulverized gold and some pulverized silver in my inventory. I'm just going to take them, I'm going to put them into a crafting table and get this electrum blend. You'll notice that uh, even though I used 10 of each, I got 20 of the electrum blend, so there's no loss through doing this. Uh, you simply mix them together, toss them into a furnace, and it can be a powered furnace from thermal expansion or any other kind of furnace that you want. And out will pop your electrum ingots. Let's grab a couple of those, and we'll just let the rest of these cook up. And you'll see over here in our energy conduit recipe. We've got two electrum ingots and some hardened glass gives us energy conduit. And you'll notice it says empty next to it. And this is important. Why is it important, you say? Because this recipe requires something a little bit more than what we've done already. Earlier I showed you how the magma crucible takes solid objects and melts them into liquid objects, and how we end up with liquid redstone here in our liquid transposer. Well, in order to make these energy conduits work, we have to take them and put them into our liquid transposer, which will then use the liquid redstone and fill them up and give us redstone energy conduits. Awesome. Redstone energy conduits are what we are going to use to power some of our machines, as well as do a couple of different things that Buildcraft power pipes can do. And I'll get into that here in just a second. The next machine I'm going to show you is the Glacial Precipitator. And it's a big, big, long, fancy name for Ice and Snowmaker. You'll notice it's got power. And you'll notice on this machine I've put it on a high required signal for operation. And that's because since I'm providing power to it and I've got it filled with water over here on the right hand side, that it would have automatically started creating items and used all of my materials before I got a chance to show you. The really cool thing about the Glacial Precipitator is that once you turn it on, it can make ice blocks for you. And as you well know, getting ice can sometimes be difficult. You need a silk touch uh, enchantment on a pickaxe in order to get these without this type of machine. And it can also make snow for you, or snowballs if you prefer. 
Just a neat machine that gives you another way to gather some resources that otherwise might be tough to get. There are two more machines I want to show you. The first is one of the, in my opinion, most useful machines in all of the mod because nothing else accomplishes this functionality in any other mod in such an elegant fashion. And it's called the Aqueous Accumulator. The Aqueous Accumulator goes down anywhere in the world and you'll notice it has some uh, outport slots on it. And if you right click on it, you'll notice that it is very, very slowly filling itself with water. And the speed that it fills itself will vary depending on the climate of the uh, biome that you're in. Wetter, more humid biomes will let it accumulate faster, and drier biomes make it accumulate slower. However, if you place water sources on either side of the aqueous accumulator, you'll notice it fills up very, very, very quickly. Very cool, right? And we'll come back to that machine in just a second. The last machine that we're going to look at is called the Igneous Extruder. And this is a machine that allows you to manufacture cobblestone, smooth stone, or obsidian. And it takes two inputs to accomplish this. It takes lava and it takes water. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of my liquiducts, which we'll talk about a little bit more specifically here in, in a minute. And I'm just going to connect it up to the uh, igneous extruder. And one of the things you'll notice about liquiducts is that when I placed it on top of the aqueous accumulator, it filled with water. But when I placed the pipe next to it, it did not automatically connect. To get it to connect, I've got to grab my crescent hammer, smack the face that I want it to connect to, and then it will fill uh, the rest of the pipe system. The other thing I want to show you, and this applies both to the conduits, you can see them here, right here, these little arrows as well as the uh, liquiducts. See that arrow there? That arrow will determine the flow of your uh, either power or liquid. So in this case I'm going to whack that guy with the wrench. I'm going to whack that one with the wrench. So whenever you see the arrow it'll tell you which way it points. Uh, will tell you which way the flow goes. Or if you see a blank face like that, that means that it's flowing into whatever it's attached to. So right now if we go click on our igneous extruder you'll see I've filled this side with water. How are we going to get lava in there? Well, you see I've got a neat uh, uh, railcraft uh, lava tank built over here, and it's full of lava. It has 576 buckets of lava in it. And you'll notice I've already got some liquid ducts attached to it with the arrow pointing the correct direction. But you'll also notice that nothing is flowing through this liquid duct, flowing through this pipe. And let's say I wanted to get uh, another stream of water coming here off my aqueous accumulator. We're going to go ahead and get it connected and we're going to start running it <laughs> and in the past what's happened is that if you run liquid pipes too close to each other they connect and they gum up the works and you have to come up with complicated arrangements to make them uh, not get in each other's way well with liquid ducts because they won't connect unless you hit the face you'll see I've got two pipes with two different liquids running right next to each other and it's no problem very, 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 very useful and very, very, very cool. And we can just pick all these up when we're done with them. And again, I'm just shift right clicking to, uh, to pick up all these uh, double expansion machines. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about um, how the conduits operate, how the liquiducts operate. We've gone through most of the machines that you're going to use in thermal expansion. Um, there are two types of power generation. The steam engine, which uh, converts uh, any type of steam into electricity. And that is uh, this recipe here. It's three copper, a copper gear, uh, which is a normal build craft gear recipe uh, with uh, copper on the outside of a stone gear. Um, and the redstone transmission coil. We haven't used this one before, so the transmission coil goes into both of these engines. And the magmatic engine is made with 10 and 10 ingots. Um, but this recipe will look very similar to anyone that's made an engine in any of the Buildcraft mods before. The magmatic engines, of course, run on magma, which is what I have set up over here. You'll notice they have uh, a liquid buffer over here on the right. And they produce about, um, I think, three or four Minecraft jewels when they're running at full speed. Uh, I'll have to double check that. The last recipe that I want to show you is the energy cell. The energy cell is 
one of the coolest things that, that thermal expansion adds. It's made uh, with a little bit more expensive recipe. It takes four of the electrum ingots, which we made before, and it takes a diamond and four hardened glass. And once you put those together, you're going to end up with this item here called an energy cell frame. And I'm going to go ahead and build this. And an energy cell frame, you'll notice, is empty. And that's our clue that we probably need to bring it over here to our liquid transposer and get it filled up with redstone. And you'll see this takes quite a bit longer than the, uh, than the, the power conduits did to fill up. But it'll slowly fill up here for you. And as it does, um, you're going to get a new item out called the energy cell frame full. And once you have the full energy cell frame, you can bring it back over to your crafting table. You can throw it in. Let's see if I can remember this recipe. I think it takes three electrum on the bottom, a conductance coil, and two lead. Nope, that's not right. Ah, the electrum's on top. Got it. Okay, so just like this. So it's two lead and the conductance coil on the bottom and then the three electrum ingots and that's going to give you a redstone energy cell. So you grab the redstone energy cell and you'll notice it has a charge and it has a line called send receive on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring this over to our power generation system over here and we're just going to slap it onto a conduit. You'll notice it'll automatically attach and again there's our arrow and it's pointing into the cell. If I right click on the cell, it has its own interface, and you'll notice here in the middle that it's slowly filling up with power. And this will hold 600,000 Minecraft tools, which is great. You'll also notice a max input on the left and a max output on the right. Uh, remember earlier I talked about how these machines are all really smart and they can all uh, adjust their power flow? Well, if you go look over here, I don't know if you remember when I clicked on this a minute ago, it was outputting like 0.5 Minecraft joules per tick. Well, now it's cranked itself all the way up to 4. And all three of them have done that. So the machines, the engines, realize that there was a machine, which is the cell, trying to draw more power. And now each of them has pumped up their output to their maximum of four Minecraft joules per tick. Then at a total of 12, this will take a while to, while to fill up to, to 600,000 Minecraft joules, but that's OK. Um, what this essentially gives us is a portable source of buildcraft energy. Once this item fills up, I can take my wrench or my hammer and again shift right click. Now I can take this anywhere I want, plop it down in the world, take my redstone energy conduits and connect it up. Switch my arrows the right way and you'll see now I've got a portable source of power that's going to come out and deliver power to these machines. You can use this to run quarries, you can use it to run engines, you can use it as a buffer between uh, different power systems because, much like all the other thermal, craft machine, thermal expansion machines, it has redstone control. So if I turn this to high, this will not output any power until I apply a redstone signal. Let's do this. I'm going to grab another redstone energy cell. Oops. Or 10. And I'm going to drop it down in the world right here. And we'll grab this stuff. And I want you to watch what happens here. As I place these down in the world, and I set my arrows, so this cell is going to feed directly into this cell. And you'll notice that this is not getting any power. However, let me get rid of these. However, if I were to come over to this machine and apply a redstone signal, now this starts to fill up with power. And it's filling up with power at 50 Minecraft joules per tick. This is really neat. This allows you to fill up this, this energy cell with machines that may only provide a maximum of 12 or 15 Minecraft joules and then output 50 joules per tick. That's way more power and will let you run things like buildcraft quarries or fillers significantly faster than just running off of two or three individual engines would allow you to fill them up. 
It's a great system and I use it all the time. Now you'll have instances where you are not able to uh, where you're not able to run redstone energy conduit to all your machines. In this case, the redstone energy cells, along with all of the other thermal expansion machines, will interact with buildcraft pipes. And in much the same way, you need to have a wooden conductive pipe out of the machine to tra take power out, and then it'll transfer right, around, right along your golden conductive pipes, just like uh, um, you're used to if you're using um, buildcraft. So I can just place these down. And you'll notice it's pushing power out. But don't forget with the new buildcraft mechanics, if your power has nowhere to go, your golden pipes will explode. So we don't want to do that. Something that uh, you may not be aware of is that wooden conductive pipes are limited to 25 microjoules per tick output. So if you want to output more than that, you do have to use multiple pipes. Just a heads up. Before we wrap up, I do want to show you the recipe for a couple of machines that I have not shown you so far. Uh, it was the last couple of machines we looked at. The aqueous accumulator, that's constructed with two pieces of tin, a pneumatic servo, two pieces of glass, a machine frame, and a bucket. The igneous extruder is very similar. It's a servo, two pieces of tin, two pieces of glass, a machine frame, and a piston. And the glacial precipitator which is two blocks of snow, a machine frame, two pieces of copper, a redstone reception coil, and a piston on top. And that does it. I hope you enjoyed the spotlight on thermal expansion. Again, look in the description of the video to find a link to the mod thread in minecraftforums.net. And feel free to leave me any comments, feedback, or suggestions. I haven't done this uh, before, so any feedback is appreciated. Thanks so much, and have a great day.